Hey guys, it's Angie and Andrew, and welcome back to another video for our What Are We Cooking? And today we're doing a couple different things um, savory. We're going to prep our spaghetti squash for tomorrow, and we're going to make a soup for our dinner this evening, and we're going to do that in the Instant Pot. Um, for those who aren't familiar with the spaghetti squash, that's this yellow, of course never fails. Um, Andrew's going to show you how to cut it and we're going to bake it on a bar pan, just a regular old bar pan and he has it lined with foil to make cleanup a little bit easier. Um, he's going to start with spraying that and you could spray it with anything right now. We're going to use the avocado oil spray because it can go up to 500 degrees heat um, and then we'll also spray the, the flesh of the squash itself. Um, Sorry I'll guys, let hold on a second. I'll let Andrew explain um, how he's going to spray the fruit, or not the fruit, the squash, and discard the seeds and whatnot out of it, and then we'll be ready to put it in the oven. Okay. I'm going to set that aside here, pardon my arms. Um, take your knife, and I like to shave the, the heel and the stem off right before I'm doing this. A, it makes it fit in the pan just a little bit easier. And just in case, you need to stand it on end to split the, this thing in half. This is being rather troublesome today. I just there sharpened goes. that knife too. The, the waste part. Mm -hmm. yeah, there it is. Now, these things can be very stiff, so you obviously want your sharpest knife to do this. So we're just going to discard the head of that. This can get rather tricky. So obviously keep your hands above the blade. And we're going to come across the top and I'm just going to bear down on it with a little bit of weight. Once you get it started, your knife should just glide right through it. So we just got to kind of got to get that flesh started. There she goes. I said, keep your fingers above the blade. Just kind of weasel it up and down a little bit. And there we go. All but perfect. Yeah. Set our knife aside. Now. Bring in our junk bucket. <laughs> we'll bring in the garbage bucket. Junk bucket, refuse bin. <laughs> we just have, it's just like a big old ice cream bucket. Uh huh. And we throw a, a grocery bag in it. And when we have our scraps, then we throw it all in there. And then when my mom comes up, she takes the scraps out and gives them to her chickens. Now what we're going to do is you're going to take a, take like a hefty big spoon, preferably a stiff one so you don't bend it. But you're going to want to just kind of score the inside of it a little bit. And what you're after is just after pulling out all those all that guts right there. So, sorry, I know you guys can't see like that, but it's hard for me to do stuff backwards. The seeds, if you feel like picking the seeds out, the seeds are good roasted too, just like pumpkin seeds, or you may know them as pepitas. Um, they taste just as good. I don't feel like roasting seeds today though, so. No. And all you're really after is just getting the seeds itself out, because now you're getting down into the membrane of the actual flesh of the pumpkin and a little bit. Before we even bake it. Let me see. One second. I've got a couple stringers I want to get rid of. There we go. Before we even bake it, you can start to see why it's called a spaghetti squash. Because we're getting those loose tendrils, and that's what it's going to bake up to. Um, is that there's lacy little bits. Now I'm just going to set that aside while I do the other one. Some of these can be rather stiff, but you're trying to use a dull spoon to cut it out, so just You don't want to use anything sharp because you're liable to slip and... Right. So, that's really all we're after on there. Yep, still got a couple little lollygaggers back behind here. While you're doing that, I'm going to get our pot preheating here. Are ready? All else fails, just use your fingers. Pull off a couple of little stragglers. 
All right, now we're going to use the avocado spray. Now remind me, honey. Hmm. Just go on the pan. You can spray the pan and the fruit, the, the squash itself, then it won't stick. Okay, so we're just going to give, get that out of the way here. Bring our pan back in. Just give it a little, little spray, just a. Now this is a high, high pressurized can. So, and they think it's the whipped cream can. Yeah, they do. So, now you want to explain what we're going to do to spray the fruit, the squash itself. You're just going to just spray the outside, the exposed area of the flesh there. Okay. The exposed area of the right. flesh, not the. Not the meat that we're trying to cook in. Yes, the meat you want to squeeze, you want to spray the flesh. Forgive me guys, it's been a while since I've done it too. And he just got off working third shift with two hours sleep, so. Yeah, just give it a little mist. There you go. And there's no point in seasoning at this point. You could, but you're going to scrape that all out anyway, so. There we go. Put our cap back on. And now it's going to go into a 350 degree oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit oven for roughly about 45 minutes. Um, you can check, start checking it anywhere from a half an hour and you'll know when it's done when you can stick a knife um, straight through that flesh. You'll see here when, it, when we pull it out um, as to when it's done. So Okay, in we go. Now then. Or just a little bit. There we go. And then it goes. Okay, so now we're going to go over here. Sorry for bouncing around. Ah, shaky. Shaky, shaky. Yeah, shaky, shaky's right. Okay, we are going on to soup. And, whoop, wrong direction. We're done with that spoon, I think. Oh my gosh, I got my pants caught in the camera, sorry. Alrighty, so now we are on to soup. And we're going to use the Instant Pot for this. So we can saute everything in there all in one shot. And we do not need sesame seeds out. I forgot to put them back when I was looking for the bay leaves. Alright, to start this, I have the pot preheating to saute. And I can feel the heat in there. So we're going to add... I think there's some oil left in here. Yep. A little bit of olive oil. And a little bit of butter. I have extra butter out here because we're going to do a dessert. When it, one of Andrew's favorites. I like making the desserts, but I don't need a whole lot of them. All right. We need a spoon. You hear that sizzle? You want to hear that? Okay, now we're going to start with a mirepoix, fancy name for carrot, celery, and onion. These I have just all cut up about the same size pieces. I'm going to start with the onions and celery. Oh, the heck with it. This is all going to get pressurized. We're just going all in. Everybody in the pool. Onions hitting butter just that's a comfort smell all in itself. Alright, can you get me a spoon now? Yep. I'm gonna cheat with the garlic. We're using pre minced garlic. And our pot saying it's ready to go. We're not afraid of garlic, so I'm gonna put a couple spoonfuls in there. And Roughly um, for amount, I used about three carrots, about three stalks of celery, and one medium-sized yellow onion, and a couple spoonfuls of garlic. Depends on your taste. But this is pretty much how we start all our soup bases out, carrots, celery, onions, and garlic. Now, this is how we buy our split peas. This is a one-pound bag, and it's from the bulk Amish food. Um, you want to, I'm going to, is that, hand me that bowl, Andrew. I forgot to get a bowl. 
It's good. I'm going to wet it anyway. Yeah. We want to just go through these with some water real quick because sometimes there's stones ends up in them and you don't want that. I don't understand how, but we just kind of want to glance through them. No, stop that way, but... I'm not seeing anything funky this time. So we're good there. Oh, but it smells mm. so good already. Yeah, you smell the garlic cooking with everything else. Okay, now the other ingredient that we're going to use in this, if you're not familiar, and I wouldn't have given this a thought, however, when we were buying these, the lady beside me says, what is that? What, what do you use that for? These are ham hocks. Okay? Now, what a ham hock is, is the back part of the, the pig, and I don't even, mm, okay, you have pig. You have your pig here. You have your front shoulder, which is also known as a Boston butt or a picnic. So, I can't refer to this as the pig butt because the butt is actually the front shoulder. So pardon my way of putting this, but this is the bottom part of the pig ass. You have the, the hip where your ham is at, and then it comes down into a shank, and this is that shank and the ankle. And some of them are a little longer than others, some of them are not. There is still meat on here. These just came out of the freezer, so I'm gonna have to cook this a little longer. But there is still meat on here, and it is smoked like a ham. Tastes just like a ham. Very good meat. But for just two of us, it makes more economical sense to buy these, which are like $2 a pound versus a $5 a pound fancy ham. It just makes no sense. And these have a lot of flavor in them. So that is a ham hock, and that's what we're going to use. Plus you get a lot of smoked flavor out of it. Yeah, because the they are smoked just like a ham, yeah. Oh, I need chicken broth. Okay. And forgot the chicken broth. But this is pretty, pretty easy to throw together. I also have this umami from Trader Joe's. It's just a, like a seasoned salt thing. We're going to put a couple sprinkles of that in. Leave that out of the way also have some fresh rosemary we just clipped off the garden, two bay leaves, and this is four cups of chicken broth. Um, I'm going to grab a measuring cup and we'll add a couple cups of water in here too. Mm -hmm. Make sure we have enough room to groove in our, for our little peas to How many cups you after? About two. Okay. Yeah, well, just a hair over there. And these, the split peas are just regular peas that they're grown to dry. They have the shell taken off of them, and they're just peas. So if you like peas and you like ham, you'll most likely like this peas. Mmm, one of my favorite vegetables. And you can do this on a regular stove top as well. It's just going to take a little longer to cook. We only have a few hours during the day, so we got to make it speedy. Okay, go ahead and pour that water in. Water. And in it goes. Okay, so now we're going to go in with our meat. I think we're going to be close to our max fill line. Just about. and put just a little bit more water in there. This is one of those things that you just got to kind of eyeball as you go and we have our max fill line here. So I just want to make sure those ham hocks are submerged. Just go ahead and pour the rest of it. There we go. All right, so now we are going to pop on our lid. singing away and oh good grief 
this particular Instapot, there's a line right here on the lid. It's a little hard to see. There's a line right there on the case. Line it right up, twist to lock it on. And then it sings you a merry tune. So we want to cancel this. And we want to set our pressure. Custom. We're going to go up to... I'm going to leave this in for about 50 minutes because those hawks are frozen. You know what? I'm going to go to an hour because those hawks are frozen. If they weren't, you could probably get away with about 30 minutes. And if you diced up ham, you could get away with 30 minutes real easy. So now we're off to the races and just let it sit there and do its thing for an hour. So our next adventure is going to be the apples. So, oh, didn't mean to kick you. So Andrew brought home, let me see, just let me see one. Don't try to pick that whole thing up. Andrew brought home farm fresh apples, orchard fresh apples, I should say, the other day. So we are going to peel these and dice them up, and then we will catch you back. Okay guys, bonus recipe. Didn't plan on doing this, but since I was already chopping apples and I was out of yogurt for the week, um, I think Andrew still has a couple left. Um, I went ahead and diced some apples pretty fine, pretty small pieces, and I'm gonna fix um, my bowls of oats um, for the week. I don't know how much I've disclosed on the channel. Um, it's been three years ago now I had um, a gastric sleeve done and it did not work for me and it's left me a terrible mess inside um, so this is actually what all the more I can eat at a time for a few hours um, so that's why I use this little size but for these I'm gonna be doing an apple pie type yogurt um, or oatmeal and I'm going to start with the whole milk yogurt. They didn't have any of the non-fat that day, so this is what we're using. And I'm going to do, I said I'm going to do four of these for myself. And then they'll be ready to go all week long in the fridge. And the longer they set, I think the long for me, the longer they set, the better they get. I like the, the creaminess. And they can be heated as well, but... I like eating them cold. Now this is a quarter cup scoop that I have here. And you kind of want your liquid to um, oats, like two to one. So I'm going to use a half a cup of oats, so I need a cup of liquid. And this is, or a quarter cup of oats is what I'm going to use. And this is my quarter cup here, so I need my milk yet and I have I have to use the fair life um, because of having a messed up stomach this is the only milk I'm able to digest and it's higher in protein as well so I'm gonna mix a quarter of a cup in each one of those well, we're gonna have to get milk this week that's the other thing I like about this milk. It takes forever to go bad, and all the more milk I can drink at a time works perfectly. Set that aside. Now, I like putting some chia seeds in mine, and I don't measure them out. But these are really good in antioxidants, fiber, um, different vitamins and they also will start to congeal and turn this into a pudding like texture and there's no flavor to them not really I mean I guess they have like a nutty flavor if you've ever eaten poppy seeds or sesame seeds it's, to me it's kind of the same thing think of it think of them as like a uh, seed version of tapioca pearls yeah that, that's a good way they start out small, but they expand and congeal, and they get very. Whoa! Much. I just made a mess. Can I get that little whisk out, please? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my little scooper ain't working so well. I could have done this in a big bowl, but it's easier to measure. For me, it's easier to measure this way.
I'm not going to get it thoroughly mixed because I still got to put my oats in and I'm going to put some spices in. Oh, I know what I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting the maple syrup. That is the icing on the cake for these. Mm -hmm. And it has to be real maple syrup. Not... Especially the pumpkin pie one you did. Oh, yeah, the pumpkin pie one come out really good. Yes. And it was basically yes, it the same as this. Um, actually, go ahead and grab that pumpkin out. I'll go ahead and do a pumpkin and see how I do the... Yeah, make it in a bigger one. That way I'll eat it later. Okay. Yeah, see? Little buggers are everywhere. Typically they don't do that, but I made a mess. Okay, so for pumpkin, I'll make Andrew a bigger one here then. Everything back out, but for the pumpkin, just add a squish of pumpkin into it and some pumpkin pie spice. And there, we've been topping them with stop it. If you're not eating the apple, then go in the room. Um, we've been topping them with toasted pecans, and that just brings it all together. This adventure in healthier eating for her actually helps me too. So she's not the only one doing this. I just eat a slightly larger portion of it. And it doesn't, it's not diet food. It's just more. It's just a healthier option. Clean food. We don't have a lot of, if any, processed food in the house. Um, occasionally there's some convenience things, but like, um, my family was here over the weekend for um, just a little hot dog bar um, that we had. And my mom was looking for chocolate. She's like, do you have any chocolate in the house? She's like, I need something sweet. And I'm like, this is the extent of our junk. And it literally fits, and you could say, it literally fits in one little basket. Like, like a, one of these little wire produce bins. That's the extent of our junk food in yep. the entire house. And really, that's not all junk food because there's some protein shakes, uh, prepackaged protein shakes in the back. Okay, so now for the spice, I just take the lid off and dump some in. I like spice, so that's. Did you get my pumpkin pie spice out for the pumpkin? Nope. All right. Uh, and I guess it's high time we put some oatmeal in. This yeah. is an eighth. Go ahead. Ugh, so I need two of these to equal a quarter. So basically just remember your oats to liquid ratio is going to be two to one. You need one part oats and two parts liquid and that liquid will can include the yogurt, um, if you want to use yogurt. If you don't want to use yogurt, you can use just straight up milk or water or whatever. And you don't have to add the chia seed, but this is a nice, easy go-to uh, meal to have on hand. And then they just stack up in the refrigerator. And these are just little anchor hawking dishes from Walmart, nothing fancy. I think we got like 30, 30 of them. 30 pieces for like 25 bucks. That's cheaper than the Dollar Tree, and these have good lids on them. Plus, it's glass. You don't get any flavor transference no. or from whatever was in the dish before. No, we can do a hot dish in here. Like, um, we had um, Asian in here, and now I'm able to put apple in, and I don't have to worry about any funky flavors left over that plastic carries. And the pumpkin one's thick already. Boy, I'm gonna have a mess to clean up here when I'm mm -hmm. done. Oh well. So the way I see it, you, if you're not making a mess, you're not doing it right. right. So now I'm gonna throw in my apples. And this was just one apple, believe it or not. Yeah, so these are very huge. cute, very big sized apples. They were the honey crisp apples. Oh my gosh, they're so good. And these these apples were locally grown in Pennsylvania. Just about an hour down the road. 
and I'm going to top them with some craisins just because I like that little bit of tart. And then when I'm ready to eat it, I'll put some toasted pecans on it. Oh, stop. Stop your grumble. All right, guys, we're going to clean this up, and then when we come back, we're going to put together Andrew's dessert. Okay guys, we are on to dessert. Now here's the apples we chopped up, and you certainly don't need a bowl this big. And I honestly don't even know if they're gonna all fit in the, the pan that we have, but. Gee darn, might have to make two. Yeah, terrible. Guys at work would complain. Mm. Okay, now this is one of these things I do by eye. Basically, that's how I, that's how I was taught. Um, I don't do well measuring things, and heaven help us all if I gotta cook something out of a box, she can't. No. I messed up cookies that you take from the package and put them on the the sheet. And yeah, no, I just don't do it. All right, so we're going to start with just some flour here. So we need something to absorb those apple juices when they cook down. So I just sprinkle some on. Okay. No rhyme or reason. Oh, I'm locking that because we're going to get back into it to do the topping. Um, now we need to sweeten them up a little bit. And these apples do not need a lot of sweet. Holy cow, they are already plenty sweet. Now, if my grandmother was still here, she said, they're not sweet enough. I can hear her now. But for me, I don't do a whole lot of sweet. So I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of sugar. Which all in all is not that much for as many apples as there is. All right, spices. Now you can take a shortcut and use apple pie spice. That's what I'll top it with, but I, I don't know. I just like to know what I'm putting into it and how much. So I give a generous swoosh of cinnamon. A little less on the ginger because ginger can be overwhelming can be strong. Cloves even less because them little buggers can take over in a heartbeat. And this one's not even open. Can you open that please? Yep. All right, so while he's opening that, I'm gonna use some nutmeg. And we prefer to use whole nutmeg that you grind. Um, it just has a better flavor than stuff that's pre-ground, in our opinion. So we're gonna grate some of that across it. And in order to grain, in order, excuse me, in order to grate nutmeg, we just use a microplane. Yep, and when I'm done, I pop it back in the drawer, throw the nut back in there, and we're good to go. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's and a fresh jug. Woo, yeah, a little bit of clove. Wow. Alrighty. So let me grab a spoon here because I don't want to get too messy. Because I gotta mix the topping and I'm gonna get messy for that. No, we don't wear aprons. So No. What fun would that be? Usually if you can tell I've been in the kitchen when I get handprints on each side of my rear end because of wiping my hands on my butt. Not that you all care to know that, but hey. Just keeping it real. I'm gonna say the peanut gallery will remain silent. <laughs> okay, and you can see they're just all oh, nicely coated already. And, I mean, we got to make sure they are good, so. Mm. If I had a tail, it would be wagging. Oh, my goodness. So good. In mm -hmm. theory, can you, could you, if in theory, dehydrate these at this point just for bites of apple to chew on if you wanted? I don't see why not. Um, that, though... I think I would cut them, use a mandolin and cut them evenly sliced mm. because this is going to be too thick right. to dehydrate. And one of those side, side questions I had in my head after seeing your reaction to that. Okay. So, well, let's see. Go ahead and let's put these in the pan, in my vintage pan. I've been looking for these dishes. They were a style that my grandmother had, and they've always just had a warm place in my heart. Sorry, scared myself on that one too. 
All right, I'm gonna let you lift that because I'm not wasting them putting them on the floor. Okay. Let's see if I can do this from behind. I'm not used to being. Yeah, I know they're gonna cook down some, but. what's left um I don't maybe put a little bit more over on this side yeah we'll have to make a smaller yeah we'll make a smaller one gee darn or put it in some more oatmeal yeah we go from nice healthy ish <clears throat> breakfast to decadent dessert and this is one of these things that I really don't eat that much of I'm like good for one little serving and then I'm done and I wait all year for this like, we made a cake for um, his birthday, late birthday, and that was what we had with the hot dogs. And I, like, ate one little sliver of it, and I told him, I said, you might as well take us to work because there's no way I'm going to be able to eat it, and it'll go bad. And... Oh, sorry. Okay. For the topping, the way I was taught to make a topping and it's different across the country, across the world, everywhere you go. But this is how um, we uh, Central Pennsylvanians do it. Um, this is a half cup. So I'm going to roughly get about two cups of flour. So it's pretty much a two to one um, ratio. Actually, since I got to do two pans... Um, I'm going to throw in a third cup. Okay. So, if I don't lock this now, I'll forget and then my luck, I'll spill it. All right, so half of three is one and a half, so we're going to put three scoops in because this is my half cup scoop. I may need more butter out, I'm not sure. Okay, we're done with that. Now for this part, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the apple pie spice because we have that nicely seasoned. I'm just gonna put some of that in there till it looks good. I can see that it's got nice little brown specks all through it, then I know that that's seasoned well. It's not that bright white anymore. I'm sure that's not going to convey on the camera, but. Hey, if you're able to eat, uh, if you're able to teach a rookie like me, you're doing good. Okay, so that looks pretty well combined now. Now, let's get messy part. These are just chunks of leftover butter. And I probably should have chunked it up a little bit, but I didn't. So I'm just chucking that in and I'm going to start breaking this up between my fingers. I'm just going to rub that flour through there until we have like peas, like little sand. Um, I'll, um, I'll have it and when Andrew edits this, I'll have him speed this part up because this is going to take a while. Um, and then we will catch you back at regular speed um, when this gets to the consistency it needs.
starting to stick together now. Okay, guys, so this is kind of what you want um, if you do this. You just kind of want it to start to clump together like wet sand. And that's what we're going to cover our dish in. Good thing because my hand's starting to wear out. And just loosely place this on top and it'll get all gooey and brown and... Like he said, this is like one of those once a year or holiday desserts. This is not something you eat every week. Or you'd have a waistline to show for it, that's for sure. And I try to get in all the little corners. Let's put some of our other one here. Right. Let's see if I can do this with my left hand. I can't even open it. In case you're y'all wondering why we have such a huge container of cinnamon, long story short, her grandmother insisted on having one specific kind of cinnamon. That was her cinnamon. That she knew where it was and knew how to find and where to grab it, so it's ours now. <laughs> Alrighty, so now these are going to go in the oven, and we'll just take you past the dirty dishes and all because, you know, it's a... It's a working kitchen here. Of course. And Andrew can show you how to check the spaghetti squash that came out. Okay. Let me reach around here, around the camera here. So, um, when obviously these are, I knew these are done. I already checked them once. But when they come out, either A, just use a hot pad and hold on to it because this is going to be steaming hot at this point. Or just use the fork and get under the edge and just. Flop it over. So I'll just take a fork and poke. If it slides in there about as loose as your as a knife does into a juicy peach, that's about what you're after. Now you're gonna feel it grainy because of the grains of the squash, but just slips right in there, you all but yep. Now you will probably watch it. I'm just gonna let go of the fork and it all but falls right in. I'm not even pushing. So that's now you nice and done. Scoop the oh boy, now you do really want me to get... use a kitchen towel or hot pad or something for this because this believe it or not, that hot pad is clean, it's just stained up from over the years. It's one so, I made years ago. You want to grab me a spoon, or I can just use I can use the wooden spoon, either one for what to scoop it out. You need something to scoop it out into. Sorry guys, we ain't playing that far. No, we never do. We fly we by the seat of our pants. So, we'll just use this. I see, this will be easier to get it out. Is it? Yeah. All right, we'll trust her on this one. I said it's been a while. You just want to pull it apart and flake it. Yep. Just kind of glide your fork along the edge. Just start, oh, just start scraping. And you'll see this little spaghetti come out. Oh, nice little pretty strands. Now at this point, um, you could top this with butter and cheese. You could top it with marinara. You could top it with an Alfredo sauce. Anything you do with pasta, you can put um, with the spaghetti squash. Because it's going to take on whatever flavors you give it. If you want a Mexican flair, add some cumin and coriander to it. Um, you want to go Italian, add marinara. You want to go Asian, add some Asian flavorings to it. I mean, you can, like a lo mein, that would be really good. Um, yeah, you can go any different direction with this. And as you can see, there's like no waste. The only waste there's going to be is the shell. And the chickens are going to love that. So, 
lovely neighbors. Sorry. Be thankful you didn't hear the horn blow or the radio blaring. We edited that part out. Well, Andrew will have edited it out. So this is just going to sit here on the plate and it's going to cool and then we'll put it in the refrigerator and then tomorrow when we go to have our lunch or supper, however, dinner, um, mid-afternoon is usually when we eat our big meal of the day um, with his work schedule. Um, that's when we'll just warm it back up and with whatever sauce we're going to have with. So that is that part. Almost done. Truth be told, I'm kind of hungry right now. All right, there she is. All right, so there's a big heap and plate of spaghetti squash out of about a one pound squash, and that's going to be meal for two of us with whatever toppings we have. And still have plenty of leftovers for me for work. Okay, guys, we will catch you back when the soup is done, and we will pull this all together. Okay, guys, time to pull out the ham oh my goodness it is falling off the bone ah! and no you're not getting the bones no too hot at this point yeah you can just like that's that is tender look at all that good meat in there oh my goodness well, if you're not a pork person, though, I mean, you wouldn't think that's good, but that's, like, yummy, yummy for us. Oh, yeah, it came out nice and clean. So, at this point, we're just going to shred the meat, and there's our soup. And because we cooked this with the marrow... Um, in the bones, there's gelatin in that marrow, and it will help thicken this up as it cools. So, it's not the most pleasant colored soup on the planet, but it sure is tasty. Alright guys, we will get some of this dished up here and get you some pictures. And um, next thing will be coming out is the... Um, apple crisp and we will show you where that's at be right back okay guys he's going in for a taste test here now you'll notice I didn't put any salt and pepper in to begin with and that's because depending on how much salt is in the, the cure that is used um, you can get things a little too salty so it's easier to salt um, and season that way at the end so. All right, a piece of ham here, pieces the whole thing together. She lets me do the taste testing because I have, as she calls it, an asbestos tongue. I've been eating fresh hot out of the pot for years, so this is nothing. That's really good. He's never had split pea soup before. No, like I said, peas is one of my favorite vegetables. And on top of that, all the rest of the carrots, onion, and celery that are all nicely cooked. and It's a winner for me. I love it. The only thing we're missing is some croutons. <laughs> but Ooh, we that's a have... story in its own right. Yeah, we, we. I'll have to show you guys um, how we did the croutons when we can get... Um, over the mountain and get some of the fresh mm -hmm. um, hearth baked bread. I mean, we I can make bread here at the house, but it's not the hearth baked, and that makes all the difference in the world. So we're kind of spoiled in our little uh, neighborhood here. You want to check that while we're? That's what I'm getting ready to do. Let's take a peek at the apple crisp here while we're running. Give me a different hot pad here. Love our homemade hot pits. Mm. 
think it could brown up just a little bit more. I think you're right. Looking really, really, really tasty. All so, right. put it back in, we think, 400 to brown it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to turn the heat up to about 400. It's been at 350 for about a half an hour now. So, we're going to turn it up to 400, probably about another 10 minutes, and we will catch you back. Okay, guys, here we go. We are finishing up with the apple crisp. It is all done. He just pulled it out and it's had a couple minutes to set up, so it is taste test time. Go ahead and scoop some out. I, oh my gosh, I wish you guys could smell. Oh, smell thunder. I wish you could feel it. It spooned all but drops through there. And one thing I forgot to say, um, when we were making the topping if you wanted to you can also add oatmeal to that topping i choose not to um that's just me so all right going in Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> That's very good. Good. Okay. okay, guys. Well, we are going to get some pictures here before this ends up devoured or off to work with him. And we thank you for watching. And we'll see what we're cooking up next week. Take care, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.